So today I want to answer the question, why did I go carbureted? It's actually a pretty simple answer. I love carburetors. Pretty much all I've owned on this channel is EFI cars from the day we started, other than the 65 over here. Some of my favorite hot rods throughout the years have been carbureted. I've had a Pontiac Ventura that I absolutely loved, a little 406 small block. This thing was awesome. Had a carburetor, never missed a beat. Car ran 690s and you could drive it everywhere on motor. I also had a little notch back that wasn't really fast. It ran like 770s or something like that. Little 302 carbureted vacuum secondary car. And I really enjoyed that thing. Here's the thing. A carbureted car just has a certain feel about it. Characteristics that you can't get with EFI. I remember when the first EFI cars, well, Mustang wise, first started hitting the streets. I remember looking under the hood of one of these cars thinking, this is like a damn spaceship. Nobody around me knew how to work on them. We were just terrified of them and we wanted our carburetors. It took years before we ever really got to the point to where we really knew what was going on with these cars. Carburetors are more mechanical in nature, obviously. They're not arbitrary numbers. Uh, on a graph that you're just inputting and changing in every little cell, you grab a screwdriver and a 5 16 and you can pretty much do anything you need to do to a carburetor. As long as you got yourself a jet kit and you can pick different jets out and maybe a couple different power valves, you can do almost anything you need to do to a carburetor. I say that because a lot of people are terrified of carburetors. They just think that you can't rely on them, you can't have a carbureted car that you could drive two or 300 miles on a trip. You know, what about uh, altitude change? What about weather change? Listen, for the most part, a carbureted car is pretty forgiving. Through the years, EFI has made huge progressions, leaps and bounds from where it used to be whenever it first really started hitting the scene. With all that being said, let's talk about why I wanted to go this route. Well, at the time, when I first started this channel, we started it with an EFI car, which would be the Retro Fox. And we built this car and since then we've done the carbon fox the retro fox and the carbon fox both have most quarter horse chips in them no problems matt over at leach motorsports tuned those things first try they were great he come in with a couple more revisions and those cars are awesome very few issues with those cars i absolutely love them i feel like i can get in them and go with no issues so i had a mega squirt in the Clipso and I just couldn't dial in the idle. Uh, I could get it close, but it would change from day to day. But this was EFI, right? It's not supposed to do that. So I'm pulling my hair out trying to tune this thing. The more I read, the more I found out, people were having those same issues. So I decided to go Holly. Surely that'll fix all of my issues, right? So order the Holly, put it in the car, and Almost immediately, I was very impressed. I'm like, okay, this is sweet. So Matt jumps on this thing, starts tuning it, and wow, you know, very quickly, this thing's running pretty good. I'm driving it. We had a few little issues <laughs> that come back, which was the consistent idle I was looking for. I couldn't find with the Holly. Like, it would be great one day, and then the next day, it would start and foul the plugs out, and it just, I just wasn't happy with the Holly controlling idle. Notice that I had that problem with the Mega Squirt, and I also had it with the Holly, both speed density cars. Now, speed density has been known to have issues like that. It's, it's not a perfect setup. So, speed density is very easy for the guy that is constantly changing parts. You don't have to change mass air meters and all that stuff. You literally can throw injectors in this thing, a couple little taps on the keyboard and you're good to go again. But in my opinion, it has its own set of downfalls, which is being speed density, it's gonna be more susceptible to issues when it comes to weather change and things like that. Most of the time the car ran great, but Occasionally, I'd go out and I'd start this thing up and it just didn't want to run right. It would run rich. I would have to go drive it or else it was going to foul the plugs out. And honestly, I didn't even bother Matt with it anymore. Uh, it had gotten to the point to where I'm just like, screw it. You know what? We'll just move on to something else. I'll get to it eventually. He put a lot of time and a lot of work into this thing and for the most part was good, but 10% of the time it would act crazy. So 
<laughs> here's why this thing actually has a carburetor on it right now. Like the, the final straw was I went out one day to start this thing up and I was kind of excited about the car again for some reason. You know, I was going to get it in and, and tuck all the wiring up and the damn thing fouled out the plugs to the point to where I had to replace three of them just to get it to start so that I could drive it enough to clear them off. <laughs> Seriously, guys, because if you don't know changing plugs, on a turbo car, especially this one with the downpipe where it is, is a nightmare. So that was my little trick. I'd throw two or three plugs in this thing, get it to fire up, and then go drive it. Anyway, the point is, at that point, I had just lost it. I'm like, I'm done with this damn thing. So I go searching around in my cabinet behind me, and I find the carbureted intake that I had stashed away. And I'm like, you know what? This damn thing's getting a carburetor. I'm tired of it. I'll ditch the turbo. I'm just done with it at this point. And it was just me being aggravated about it. Uh, I probably overreacted, I'm sure, but deep down there was more to the story. I really just wanted to put a carburetor on the car, I think. I had been threatening Andrew and my dad and everybody else like they cared, you know. But I was threatening them. I said, look, I I'm going to put a damn carburetor on this thing. I can't deal with it anymore. The deal was originally we were going to take the turbo off this car and just put a set of long tubes and maybe a shot of nitrous, but for right now we'd just be in a. Well, I started thinking about it and I said, you know what, let's just leave the turbo because it's actually cheaper to do it that way. I can buy a hat. Let's try blow through. Well, at that point I became intrigued by it because in all of my years, blow through setups typically just don't work good. I've seen so many guys deal with issues with blow through setups. And I said to myself, if I fail, I won't be the only person that's ever failed doing it. So I decided to give it a go and just start researching everything that I could. So that's what I did for about a week straight, was nothing but watch videos, research, read old forums and everything else. And I felt like I knew enough to give it a try. So that's what we did. And so far, so good, it's worked out really good. This car now is more drivable than it was EFI. It still occasionally has a hiccup. It's a carbureted car. It's gonna have a stumble sometimes, it just, it is, but here's the thing, it's tolerable. It's not something that's gonna leave you beside the road scratching your head. It's probably a, a bad power valve or a float stuck or something simple along those lines, right? If it, if it comes down to a carburetor issue. Typically a carburetor will run good enough to at least get you home. I've had tunes get corrupted for no reason in my EFI cars and leave me stranded. What are you gonna do without a computer? There's no screwdriver or no wrench that's gonna fix that. Why I'm saying this, is because carburetors get such a bad rap. Here's the thing, people who are against carburetors have probably had bad experiences because they honestly didn't know how to work on them. They didn't know how to tune them. I mean, hey, I was one of those guys as well, but luckily I had some pretty good experiences through the years. People that say it's old technology and, and, there, and there's better ways now, yeah, you could absolutely argue that point. But you could also look at some of the faster cars out there in the world right now, and a lot of those things are actually still running carburetors. So they can be made to be efficient, believe it or not. The AFRs on my car right now are actually fairly consistent. Uh, probably not as good as the EFI. It's got some little spikes here and there, but if you smooth it out, it's actually really, really close. And I mean all the way through the whole circuit, right? From primaries to power valve to secondaries and the power valve in the back it's actually pretty smooth there's a couple little imperfections in there guys but it's actually really good here's what i know as long as my fuel pump's working more than likely i can get this car started and i can get my butt home if something happens i've had it happen with the efi car that i couldn't i had to get my wife to bring me a laptop one day luckily i was only two or three miles down the road testing i don't know something happened Computer freaked out, lost my tune, and I had to get her to come bring me a computer to get this thing home. It would not start. So, there again, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of EFI. Fuel injection is awesome. But so are carburetors. You just got to put the time and research in to understand how they work. That's the problem people have, I do believe, when it comes to carburetors, is they just don't put the time and effort in to understand how they work so that you can make the changes you need to make. This isn't a carburetor tutorial video, but I will say this. I want, to, I want you guys to remember this. Anybody wondering about a carburetor, you really, really need an AFR gauge 
a wide band, just like you would with an EFI car, if you want this thing to perform properly. You need to know what this thing is at full throttle and everything else. Now, you can guess at it like we all did back in the day, but if you've got nitrous or boost or something like that, you really need to monitor that stuff. And if you do, and you make the right changes, you'll have an awesome, awesome carburetor that will be super fun to drive, and it'll surprise people. The throttle response on a carburetor is second to none. It's amazing when they're right. So why did I go carbureted? Because they're badass, man. Now carburetors are the different thing. And I also wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see if I could do this to prove to you guys that if I can do it, you can do it. This car's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. We still got some stuff we need to work out. And I could blow it up tomorrow for all I know. But I can tell you this. It runs really good, and I'm super excited about it. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. That's food for thought, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, yeah, and as always, thanks for watching.